Hey guys, welcome back. Um, haven't been doing much in videos lately. We've been extremely busy uh, at the shop, and it's only, as you guys know, myself and my partner. Uh, we got swamped here for the last like three weeks. It's, it's just been crazy with all kinds of uh, uh, just all kinds of stuff. It's just been too busy. Uh, had some good ones in here that I would have loved to film if I had the time, but I just didn't. So I'm, and I apologize for not putting out uh, more videos and. Um, to some of you, I apologize for putting out videos at all because I know it's uh, butt hurting some people, but sorry about that. Um, in any case, I wanted to do part two to this, uh, to this Mustang that we did the fuel injection system on. Now, uh, I don't even know where we left off in part one, but what I wanted to show you, I'm going to just start from where I am. We do have this thing finished uh, for the most part. Okay, We may have to go through some fine tuning with it. It actually runs pretty well. I may not have to touch anything, but we're going to see. We're going to do some more driving with it and, you know, go through it. But I'll show you guys where we're at. So what I'll do is I will get some light on the subject here so you guys can see better. And I'll show you where we're at. As you can see, the fuel tank is in, bolted in, mounted. Uh, and I think I've mentioned this before, this fuel tank is beautiful. It's like coated, uh, really, really nice. This is the uh, fuel pump, fuel sending unit. Everything is in tank like a modern vehicle would be. These are the lines that I don't believe were made when I was speaking to you guys last. Uh, I custom made all the lines out of uh, SURNR's kit for uh, fuel line repair or whatever. They're, they're designed to be made. Uh, you know from start to finish I guess if you wanted to which is what I did uh, Quick connects on all of them. This is your vent. This is your pressure line, and this is your return I marked them with a label maker as well just uh, for future reference if anybody works on it and isn't sure uh, It's always better to be safe than sorry. There are grommets running through the trunk uh, for everything obviously um, they are fastened here as you can see all right, with clamps, these are these are also from the SUR and R. They come with the lines. Uh, then, if we go up to the front, uh, well, actually, I'll just finish up in the trunk. Actually, let's do that. I'll move you guys back a second over to the side, and I'll show you these brackets here. I custom made, obviously, because what I wanted to do. My concern with this setup is that there's really nothing to sit here on top of the lines and everything for the for the uh, fuel assembly, okay? So I don't want somebody to inadvertently break these things by throwing something in the trunk, uh, you know, because this cover is going to be over everything. But this cover is only fabric, okay? So what we did, what we did was we made a piece of half inch wood, cut it out, and uh, this will be mounted with these four bolts into the brackets that I made with thread sets. Um, once it's positioned properly, it'll, it'll bolt in. And uh, that'll be that. Okay, so that'll be nice and solid. It's a good platform. It's not going not gonna to break. And then the spare tire will sit here as it normally does. And the cover will go over everything. And that'll be that. Okay, so this was... Uh, a lot of work. I actually called a friend in who does woodworking uh, to cut it out for me. He's got machines and stuff that I don't have, which uh, made life a lot easier. A lot of measuring here because nothing is actually straight. There's no real 90 degree lines on this. Everything is beveled. And uh, there's just a lot of time figuring uh, how, to, how to fit this. And I really wanted to make sure that this went in because I didn't want to leave this open where you know anything could get damaged. It's too easy to damage it, uh, the lines. So, with that said, we'll go to the front and uh, I'll get some light on this. So as you can see here, hopefully you can see here, throttle body assembly, four injectors inside, uh, there's the lines coming up to the front. There's your uh, pressure and your return line, also quick connects. Um, this here is to hook up the, um, 
is to hook up the, uh, the, the handheld unit to monitor the data stream on here, data log, or uh, change settings in the fuel control. Um, so that I can, I haven't actually decided how we're doing that yet. I may leave it as it is because they do, so, they do give you a mount where you can mount the assembly inside the vehicle. Uh, I don't know whether or not the owner of the vehicle wants to do that right now. I, you know, I, I would actually not do that if it was mine. I would leave it like this, and then if you want to plug in and do any tuning with it, you can. Uh, the, the cable is plenty long enough. You can run it through the window and drive the vehicle and data log, and it looks cleaner this way than to have it running in the car. But we'll see what he wants to do. <coughs> so what else can I show you here, really? Uh, this is all wiring for that system it's just fuses and such that are you know taped into a loom and uh, kind of taped off to the side the the uh, the fuel pump is driven by a relay okay this this thing here I believe has a I believe that the way the system is set up you can well I really don't want to say you can you're not supposed to do that in any system I mean you really don't want to run the fuel pump off of the driver in the PCM, whatever the kind of setup, if it's a relay or whatever, I don't know what's in there. I don't know the internal circuitry, but I know there's an output that will kick a relay on. So what makes sense is to add a relay into the system, into the circuit, because if you do have a problem, I would prefer that this relay gets the brunt of it, you know, and the fuse that it's attached to than the, than the uh, computer control inside the throttle body. So we have a relay for the fuel pump. Uh, this is only obviously is hooked up over here because I only have one wire running back to the pump itself to power it. The ground is, wi is uh, wired into the chassis in the back. Uh, everything is soldered. There is no, uh, there are no buck connectors. There's none of that stuff on here. Um, I put some loom around some wires that were here already just to clean it up a little bit for the guy. But uh, you know, everything else pretty much is done the air cleaner is set on you know the air cleaner does fit on top of the stock unit like I mean like the stock like the stock carburetor uh, it does fit on top and it clears everything so we already had that on um, that's all set uh, coolant sensor on this thing is here so I did have to change the thermostat housing on here because I needed one off of a, a Lincoln that would have the threads in it so I could put the coolant sensor I couldn't put it in the intake because he already has a um, he already has that port taken with a gauge uh, sending unit, so there was nothing for me to do there. I had to I had to use it in the housing. It's fine, um, and that's pretty much it. And I think you saw the fuel pump. The original fuel pump is gone now. You don't need that anymore. This is the block off plate, uh, and that's pretty much it. So I guess at this point, all that's really left is to start it up and um, you know we could do that just want to make sure this sucker isn't in gear obviously you don't need to give it gas anymore show you actually now that I got this panel made and I know that everything's situated in the back I actually bought this heat wrap 
or exhaust wrap or whatever you want to call it, this insulator. And it's got Kevlar in it, so this thing will, you know, protect from heat. And I want to wrap uh, some portions of the exhaust on here where I think that it's uh, going to cause any kind of issues uh, with, um, you know, possible hot starts and such with the headers and all that crap. And I also want to put, uh, I also want to put some of this around the fuel lines in some areas just to protect it in case something kicks up. Any areas that are open, this will protect it from rocks and such that'll, uh, it's, it's overkill, I'm going to be honest with you. There's really no need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway, so. Um, I feel like you go this far with a job and, uh, you know, the guy spent money on the car, he's spending money with us, he's spending money on the system. I just feel that uh, you got to go the extra mile. You know, the same thing with this deck plate that I made for the back, it's not something he asked for or we even discussed, but uh, if it was my vehicle, this is how it would be done, so that's how it's getting done. Um, this could have been made out of other stuff, I mean, you could, you know, other materials, I mean, you could have made it out of... Uh, Lexan or plexiglass or what have you and uh, just that I figured that for what it is you're not going to see this um, you know it's buried underneath the cover so it really didn't have to get that extravagant or expensive so cheap you know plywood was my uh, solution to this uh, I know some of you guys <clears throat> some of you guys are saying we're going to say that uh, you know you could have put a a different material in there, something that's you know not, not something other than wood. And yeah, we could have, but for the for the way this thing is set up, you're not going to see it. It's uh, if there was no if there was no cover over it, then I would have said yeah, put something that's you know uh, higher end. But the, this this kind of overkill all around. So that's why I went with the wood. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring this thing up. I'm going to back it up, put it up on the lift, and I'm going to uh, put her up in the air. And I'll show you the bottom. I'll show you where the fuel lines are run and how everything is situated and um, we'll go from there, I guess. And I'll wrap everything up. That way the lift is free for Tuesday because today is Saturday. Uh, yeah, so we're off, well, I don't know, we're supposed to be off Monday. We're gonna see how that goes, how I feel when I wake up Monday morning. Um, so, I don't know. But hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're back. Uh, now on the lift with the vehicle. I got the, uh, heat wrap installed. I wasn't going to film that. It's kind of silly. I just put it in a couple of spots as you can see here around the header. Um, just in some areas where I thought there was going to be an issue. Um, the starter, I'm going to wrap. This is the last one I'm going to wrap and I will do that after I finish showing you guys underneath. You can see the, the uh, fuel lines running up here. Okay, they're all in brackets. Everything here is all uh, tied up one way or another uh, securely and safely and um, here's the bottom of our tank as you can clearly see there's the old feed line he doesn't want me to take it out he wants to leave it in in case he wants to revert back to a carburetor which um, you know whatever I mean it's in there it's not it's not harming anything it's not in the way of anything so it's fine uh, it's just going to be tied out of the way with a piece of safety wire and um, I mean, realistically, if he ever goes back to a carburetor, my recommendation would be to replace that line anyhow. It doesn't really make a difference. But that's just taking along, uh, going along for the ride at this point. Uh, here's what I was talking about with the fuel filter. All right, as you can see here now, I don't know how this is coming up on the camera, but there's plenty of clearance, guys, between the exhaust and the fuel uh, lines and stuff here. There's nothing. I did wrap it just for a little bit of overkill safety. Uh, completely unnecessary, but... You know, you get the point. Uh, this is secured in a bracket, okay, that's, uh, you know, basically like a factory type of install. Try to get you a shot under here, if you can see the little bolt head. Um, and it's got rubber, the clamp has rubber, so I mean, she can move a little bit, okay. Uh, quick connects again, so you can easily replace the filter. It's a factory style filter, not a race filter that you would have to go buy some stupid uh, thing and order it online. You can buy this at any parts store. Uh, I gave him the part number. I left the part number of the vehicle for him. And that's about it. I mean, as far as this goes, the only other thing is this rollover valve here, vent uh, tube combination thing here that we got, we had to install. Um, just had to make a bracket. Kind of sucks that they didn't give you a bracket with it, but that's, that was easy enough to fabricate. Um, there's nowhere else to put this thing. It's as high up as I could get it. There's really nowhere else to mount it that's clean. It's gonna 
uh, but it'll, I'm sure it'll function just fine. Um, and that's pretty much it with this thing. As you can see underneath it, I mean, it has slight rust. I mean, these car, this car is 50 years old, uh, or more actually. Um, but considering the age, this car is in very, very good shape. And uh, you know, the guy likes to play with it, so he likes to drive it. It's not, it's not a car that sits in a garage or goes to shows and stuff. And it, it's legitimately a, you know, it's a real 65 uh, model. So. Um, pretty much original for the most part it's not you know it's not molested so that's pretty much it I don't really know what else to show you guys as far as um, as far as this car I started it up for you you see that it runs um, I'm not going to take it out and drive it now because right now they're washing trucks outside with um, uh, what do you call it a power washer and uh, they use an acid base to clean the aluminum on them uh, on the trailers so I don't want to take this car out in the acid bath um, you know because I will end up having to wash it uh, once I get back inside so I'm not going to take it out uh, it is still Saturday um, from when I was filming before uh, so it's the same day but uh, Saturday is the day they clean the trucks so with that said uh, I stayed late today my partner left I wanted to button this thing up, um, you know, try to try to get as much done as possible. This car is virtually done now. I uh, would like to drive it a little bit more, see how the drivability is, and uh, after it learned a little while, I believe it'll be fine. It uh, it's a nice you know it's a nice system. I mean it it seems to react pretty well. In the future, uh, I have a I have a friend uh, whose car I may or may not have posted in the. Uh, you know, on the, on the YouTube photo uh, community. I'm not sure if I posted it, but he's got a Mustang that he recently picked up. It's a 70, and it's an absolutely gorgeous car. It's a big block monster, uh, 460 cubic inch base uh, that has been bored, I believe, 60 over. It has uh, a lot of good stuff, some scat bottom end uh, components. It has um, aluminum Cobra Jet heads that are worked to the gills. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice setup. That car, we're going to be doing some work on. Uh, you know, he's uh, this guy's is a brother to me, so uh, this is this is, and he's also a tech, so it's not something that we're going to be charging for. He's going to be here working with me, and uh, it's just going to be on our off time. Uh, we got to do some welding and grinding and cleaning up and stuff like that on the car that where they welded didn't do a very good job. Uh, I'm going to try to film some of that if possible. Uh, it depends on whether or not he wants to be on camera, but uh, if he's okay with it, we're going to film it. And the other thing is that the uh, that car at some point we're talking about injecting it as well. Uh, it's carbureted obviously now. Um, we have a baseline on the car for what it ran at the track. It's a street car, but it's 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 a hell of a it's a hell of a runner. So. We're going to redo some stuff on it. It has short headers on it, which are, uh, for you guys that are drag racers are familiar, it has, and you're going to laugh because it has inch and three quarter primaries on it. Uh, the inch and three quarter primaries coupled with the fact that they're short tube headers and they're extremely restrictive are killing that motor. And we, we figured that from the start, I guess. Um, what we're going to do is we're probably going to make a set of long tube stainless headers for it custom and weld them up here, fit them into the car, and unbottle that beast and see what it can do uh, just with the exhaust alone. And I believe that that car is going to pick up like a maniac. It's, uh, it's, it's a really, it's a nice setup on that car. Uh, it just needs some fine tuning. In any case, we're going to do that. We're going to go with two inch, uh, two inch primaries, three inch collectors, uh, and three inch exhaust all the way back on the vehicle. So. It's going to be a big step up from the inch and three quarter primaries to uh, two and a half inch exhaust that's on there now, and extremely restrictive mufflers as well. Uh, the other thing we're going to probably do with that car is inject it. Uh, we're not going to go with a Fitech system on it, however. Uh, we've been looking at uh, some other options that are out there, and there, there are a number of them. We have no experience, honestly, with any of them as far as actual experience working with them. but. Uh, from what we're seeing, the way we want to go is uh, he likes the Edelbrock system, and I, I can't argue with that. It's Edelbrock's a name that's been around forever. Um, before he, uh, what, what do you call it? some years back, uh, we actually um, 
myself and some friends actually got to meet Vic Edelbrock Sr., which was a freaking amazing thing. It was like standing next to a legend hanging out with him. And, um, you know, I've always used his parts on, on Hot Rod builds, and he's, he's really, his stuff is good. Uh, his system has an option. Uh, they, they have a few options, actually. You can pick an intake, uh, whatever you desire for your setup, your combination. And what they'll do is they'll drill the intake out for actual port fuel injectors. So unlike this, which has, I mean, and, and I'm not knocking this system. This is a good system. It's, it's a, a hell of a step for, away from carburetors. But this system has four fuel injectors, as I've said before, inside the throttle body. That system has eight injectors on the, um, on a fuel rail in the, you know, in the actual uh, intake, which is like a late model uh, port fuel car. The one thing we're not sure of uh, on that setup is how they're, how they're injected. If that thing is a bank fire system or if it's a, uh, if it's a sequential system, meaning for you guys that don't know, if it's, a, if it's a sequential system, each injector will fire individually in time. Uh, if it's a bank fired system, it'll fire one bank and the other bank consistently, okay, back and forth uh, when the computer controls it. So I believe it's going to be bank fired, so does he. We really didn't look that deep into it, but it's still a step up from a throttle body injection system because the, the atomization of the fuel is going to be better and the fuel control is going to be more accurate, meaning that the car should uh, run cleaner than a throttle body setup. Uh, it's obviously it's obviously tunable as well. So we're gonna go we're gonna see about that. I mean, I know that this channel really isn't about uh, this kind of work, and some of you guys may not really enjoy these videos. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to put content out, um, you know, for kind of you know for a wider base of people. You know what I mean? I, I started this out as a uh, as a I don't even know. I started this out, guys, for. Uh, the, the people out there that really don't know what it entails to fix cars or what we actually deal with in shops every day and you know uh, I wanted to show it you know what I mean and there's a lot of guys out there that are doing the same thing that I'm doing and you know it's, we're nothing special we're nothing different really um, but we do take on other types of work as well we don't just do diagnostics and electrical and you know uh, you know sometimes we get overwhelmed and uh, it actually happened yesterday. I um, I had a call Keith yesterday. I had a I had a truck down here that I just could not stay with, could not focus on, and um, he came. He actually came down, and uh, we worked on it last night and fixed it. And uh, you know um, that we actually should have filmed it, but it was it was freaking late. But in any case, uh, I'm going to shout out to Keith at New Level for always having uh, always having my back, along with uh, probably five million other guys that are out there. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, you know, it's good to have you. It's good to have uh, another set of eyes. Sometimes it's funny, you know. Just uh, sometimes you run into things. You, you just you're not sure. You don't want to make a call. Uh, it happens to all of us. So uh, lucky for me, um, you know, I have guys like that that I can call on sometimes, and guys call on me sometimes. Whatever. I mean, it's always good to have a fresh set of eyes. But in any case, um, this networking thing is the other thing I really wanted to touch on in this video. I wasn't going to, but I've been standing here messing with this thing a little bit, and my head has cleared a little, uh, a little more focused. The week's been, like I said, these past few weeks have been absolutely insane, and I'm not complaining because I would, you know, obviously the uh, the alternative to being busy would suck. So thank God we have work. Um, what I was getting at though is that I wanted to touch on some stuff that. You know, there's, there's a big group of guys out there. Some of you guys that watch our channel know about it. Other, other guys may not. If you're new to the channel, whatever, new to watching automotive videos on YouTube, you don't know, that's, you know, it's fine. But the thing is that as techs, uh, we're trying to all network together, okay? Uh, there's no, there's, there shouldn't be any secrets in this business anymore. And that's something that I strongly believe in. I, I believe that since I was a young kid in this business that I do, knew nothing. And I don't, I don't want to come off as a guy that's arrogant because I really am not. I'm, I'm not arrogant. I believe that we get humbled quickly in this business, okay? And I've said that before. I believe that I know what I'm doing, okay? And I feel confident most of the time that I know what I'm doing. However, nobody knows everything. 
and I have my struggles, Keith has his struggles, other guys have their struggles, okay? We all have our, 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 our vehicles that come in and you say to yourself, oh boy, you know what I mean? Now, the difference nowadays is that we have the internet and we have YouTube and we have Facebook and we have all these groups and we have these, um, these outlets that we can get information out to each other. Whether this video, this video may help nobody, okay? Maybe, you know what I mean, this is not something that may help anybody, but maybe there's a guy out there that's saying to himself, how do I do this, how should I do that? And he runs across this video and it does help. If that happens, if that helps, if this helps one person, I'm happy, okay? If any of my videos help one person, I'm happy. The point that I'm trying to make is that years ago when I started in this business, just like everybody else, including Keith, including uh, a number of, uh, not, not a number, everybody who's in this business, anybody whose channel you watch, when they first started, do you think that they knew what they were doing? Do you think that they went in there and they were the guy that they are today? We change every, every day we learn. Every day we pick up skills. We, uh, we learn new things about how systems work. We gain knowledge on, de on testing and diagnostics. Uh, we learn new equipment. We learn new s whatever. I mean, it's an evolving, it's an ever-evolving industry. Okay, so what I'm getting at with that is that when I started in this business, I was green too. Okay, I knew nothing. So, never worked on a car before, right? But I was a young kid. Trying to find someone to teach you, to take you under their wing that had knowledge, that's the key. Okay, you needed, there was two things you needed. You needed one, a guy that was willing to take you under his wing and hire you, take a shot on, you know, take a chance on you. And he was willing to teach you and he, and he had to have knowledge. You can fall into a shop that, that with a guy that's gonna take you under his wing, he wants to teach you, but he knows nothing. But if he knows that much more than you, he seems like a genius, you understand? This is the, the double-edged sword of this business. With the way things are today, with the abilities we have to network, it doesn't have to be that way because you could kind of see when somebody's full of it. You understand? You can go look at some of the channels that are out there and these guys that flap their gums a lot about stuff but you never actually see them fixing a the car and none of their stuff makes any sense, okay? You know they're full of crap. I won't name names, I'm not gonna do that, but. You, you guys get my drift, okay? Uh, then you have other guys that have channels that are legit, that are actually showing real world diagnostics, real world repairs, real, you know, real deal stuff. They're probably not full of crap. They probably know what they're talking about, all right? Now, again, I won't mention names, but you guys aren't stupid. You know what I'm talking about. My problem comes in with a lot of, with some of this recent stuff that people were talking on some groups about uh, having a problem with YouTube and text putting out information on YouTube. Well, you have to learn somewhere. You know what I mean? And as I've said before, I ain't the best guy out there. I ain't even close. I don't claim to be, okay? I put out stuff that I think will help somebody. I try to be as straightforward and honest as I can be. And I am not hurting anybody by doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not, and, and, and for, if you're, <laughs> if any of you guys are thinking that I'm making some sort of crazy money doing this, I'm not. I'm making pretty much nothing, all right? Do I care? Not really. I mean, if I had to rely on YouTube to pay my bills, I'd be screwed, you know what I'm saying? Um, do I think the channel will take off? Who knows, maybe it will. Maybe I'll never have more than 2,000 views. Maybe I'll have, never have more than 2,000 subscribers. I don't know. At this point, I don't care. Okay, if you like my content, I do ask that you, you know, you share it. Yes, if you think I'm helpful to people, share it. Why not? Uh, I'm not begging for subs though. I'm not doing that. I'm doing this for my, I'm doing this for myself because I feel like it's a good outlet and I feel that I have the ability here to help some people. That's the only reason I do it. That's the bottom line. That's why a lot of other guys do it too. Even if some of these guys may be making good money. They didn't start out making good money either on YouTube. They started out a channel because they wanted to show some stuff. They wanted to show what they can do, show what shops are about, okay? So they didn't start out saying, I'm gonna be a millionaire on YouTube. None of them. I don't care what they're making or what they're not making. None of these guys are doing it for that reason. Um, is it a nice benefit if you are making money off YouTube? Sure it is. Who wouldn't want extra income? And the videos take time. This takes time out of our day to do. Uh, you know. We, we're not looking to get rich off it, you know what I mean? My problem comes in where a guy has to complain about us, any of us doing YouTube videos, okay? I don't, I don't like that because 
we are not hurting anyone. We're not hurting the industry. We're helping it because we're helping each other to network. If a guy out there, uh, another tech out there, has a problem and he looks, maybe he looks up the, the symptoms or the codes or what have you on YouTube, and one of my videos comes up, or one of Eric O's videos, or Scanner Danner, or Flat Rate, uh, Flat Rate Master, or Cody, or Mario, or freaking anybody, anybody out there that's making videos, their video comes up. Oh look, this guy had this problem. And they start looking through the video, and they say, oh man, I missed that, let me go test this. And they test it and they find the problem. That's hurting the industry? That's ridiculous. Or if you try to program a vehicle and you, you have a problem, and, and Sam's video comes up on how to program something, and you go check out his video, that's a problem for the industry? That's hurting the industry? That's helping the industry, guys. Uh, I'm not going to go on a rant. I refuse to do it. I, I made a New Year's resolution last summer. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to rant. I'm just going to say that if, you, if anybody out there thinks that this is hurting the automotive industry by networking, you're nuts. Plain and simple. I'm not going to stop making videos. I'm going to do what I think is right. And I'm going to try to help anybody I can help. That's the bottom line. These other guys are going to do the same because that's what we do. This is part of it now. This is part of what we do today. So I hope you guys continue to watch. Um, I hope that you guys get some kind of enjoyment or some kind of knowledge out of our videos. And I really, uh, I really sincerely mean that. I really hope that it helps people because that's why I started this. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to bring this thing down off the lift and I'm going to uh, head home and try to get some rest because it was a long ass week and I'm tired. So you guys have a great uh, Memorial Day, safe weekend, don't drink and drive, please. Uh, we've had too many losses due to that. Um, just be smart and uh, like they say, remember uh, if you get in trouble tonight, the judge ain't going to be until Tuesday. See you guys at the shop.